What's going on, everybody? I just want to give you a quick heads up before we get the podcast started here. Number one, I want to thank Rory Rodriguez so much for coming on to the Chandler Burton podcast. He's a really busy guy. He's a father of a little girl. And so just he's so busy. And so I just want to thank him so much for making some time to talk to me here. Also, to let you guys know here, this podcast is a little bit shorter. Rory had an appointment that he had to go to, and he can only talk through Zoom. And I do not pay for Zoom. I don't want to pay pay for that and so uh it's only like it only collapsed up to like 40 minutes here so you'll see probably an icon pop up on the screen here letting us know like the time's gonna end up here so it is a little bit shorter than my other podcasts here in the past but again i don't want to take too much of rory's time i'm just grateful that i was able to come on just to give you guys a heads up here that it is a little bit shorter and again this is another early access podcast so again if you want to support me as a creator and get early access to like reaction videos podcasts Head over to patreon.com slash Chandler Burton Entertainment. Again, patreon.com slash Chandler Burton Entertainment. There is a $1 tier, a $3 tier, and a $5 tier. Joining the $1 tier alone helps me a lot as a creator, and you get a whole bunch of benefits, again, like early access podcasts, early access reaction videos, some full album reactions, or again, if you're feeling generous, there is a $3 tier and a $5 tier. So again, if you like what you hear and want to support the channel and the podcast going forward, Again, patreon.com slash Chandler Burton Entertainment. Again, I want to thank Rory Rodriguez so much for coming on to onto the Chandler Burton podcast here. And I hope you all enjoyed the episode. Thank you all so much for your ongoing support. You're listening to the Chandler Burton Podcast. Turn it up to 11 and rip the knob off. This is Chandler Burton. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Chandler Burton Podcast. I am your host, Chandler Burton, and today, really special guest here. We got Rory Rodriguez from the band Dayseeker. How you doing, my man? I'm good, man. Yeah, the day is just starting over here in California, but yeah, it's uh, it's all good over here. Good. Doing, man? I'm doing good, man. Thank you. Yeah, it was nice that we could figure this out because we're on the same time zone, so I was like, we didn't have to like like worry about like you know later time or earlier time like that so it kind of worked out all right in our favor so i was like i was really happy about that and again man i was telling you before thank you so much for taking a little bit of your day i know you're a busy guy got stuff going on just to have a chat with me dude as i said i'm a big fan so i'm just excited to just ask you a few questions here so thank you for making some time to talk to me dude i appreciate it of course, man. No worries. Yeah, really appreciate it, dude. So we'll go ahead and just get quickly started here. Uh, I just just curious, how did the uh, how did the tour go with Bad Omens, um, Make Them Suffer, and Thousand Below? It looked like it was a awesome show, dude. Yeah, um, it was great, man. It was definitely a definitely a big shifting point for us. Again, I feel like um, I feel like there was a lot of Bad Omens fans who maybe like didn't know who we were, and I feel like they are fans of us now. So I, I definitely felt like we, we gained like a little bit more of a following after being exposed to their fan base. And I mean, yeah, it was sold out shows every night. Like can't, can't really ask for much more than that, you know? Yeah, man, that's so cool. I mean, how did that feel like having, I mean, it was cool that like bad omens made like an announcement, like on their social media saying like every show was like sold out. Was that like nerve wracking for you guys at all? Or was it like, was that exciting or? No, I think like, uh, I think with touring, it's like you get so used to it because it's your job that like, right. you definitely get a little bit of like nerves and jitters like right before you go on. But then when usually when you're like, like right when you start playing, it kind of all goes away. So it wasn't really, I wouldn't really say it's like nerve wracking. We definitely have like, a, we have a tour like late, a lot later in this year. I think it's like November and December that we okay. confirmed for. And that's like, it's uh we're supporting again for like kind of a more popular band and I, I think they're cool. aiming to do like two thousand to six thousand cap rooms so that'll definitely be dang dude be a little bit more nerve wracking because that's like we we haven't like we we played like festivals and stuff but not like not like full venue stretches where there's that many people so yeah that might be 
that might be a little bit more nerve wracking. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> actually, still doing those shows, but I, I think it'll still be fun. Yeah, man, that's awesome, dude. I mean, it's just so cool to see like your guys' success from everything that you got. I mean, I've been I've been following you guys like forever and so i think it's just super cool to see that you guys are now getting like the success that i think you absolutely deserve like i used to tell my friends like you guys need to check out like day secret they're super sick i turned a lot of my friends on to your song uh vultures uh back in the day and i was like dude like these guys are like super sick and keep an eye out for them dude they're gonna they're gonna blow up for sure so i think that's really cool that you guys are able to like like just I don't know how this momentum that you guys have been having has I haven't really seen this in a band in quite a while at least that I follow and so I think it's just so cool to watch you guys from your first album like back in what 2013 2014 to like now you guys are like a super well known name I think in like the scene so I I mean that's super cool man yeah it's um it's a little surreal um because I think we we just got used to kind of just being a smaller band with a, a smaller following so it's uh right it's really nice but i, I think sometimes it, it still doesn't click for us that like people people like know who we are on the right. scale yeah yeah it's, it's yeah it just feels strange man but yeah it's, it's not it's really cool i'm really happy for you guys seriously like you guys are just like the nicest guys and absolutely like deserve it as i said you and i actually it was a long time ago but we've at, we've met before and i shook your hand it was at the wage war show when they when they uh when you guys opened for them when they did their pressure tour and dude i didn't have my phone on me because it was dead because i was filming like everything but dude you were like super nice to me and i was like dude these guys are these guys are so awesome. Like I, I was like really, it was really cool. You're like, you're like up in the top where the bar was or whatever. We were just talking for a little bit. And I was like, dude, this guy is so nice, dude. <laughs> so oh, thanks, yeah, it, it meant a lot, dude. Yeah, it really did. So, um, did you have any, do you have any like cool, like memories or anything from the tour that you can kind of like take away or anything like that, or anything that you'll kind of remember forever from doing this tour or something that you learned personally from doing this tour? Um, yeah, I can't really say anything specifically. There's some yeah. like highlight cities. Like, um, there's this one venue in in Worcester called the Palladium, and mm -hmm. there's kind of a they have kind of like a, a bigger a bigger room. It's more of like a like a like a grand theater hall, mm -hmm. um, and then they have like a smaller room. And like we we played like the smaller room on our headliner, and then we we've played the bigger room now a couple of times. And I don't know why it's like the acoustics in that room and the crowd is just so good and it, it feels like and it feels like that city just really shows up for us and like the shows are just so good every time we play there so that place kind of that holds a special place in my heart but otherwise i mean i mean it was just great memories i mean all, all the bands were really fun to hang out with make them suffer was definitely like a big favorite because they're just these silly australian yeah man guys. <laughs> they're just yeah they were just they were uh they were hilarious we that's awesome we, like, dude we, we like hung out and they uh i think they're i think their merch guy had a birthday the same day yeah our our filling drummer had a birthday so we we all like had like uh dinner at this really bougie italian restaurant nice you know? <laughs> like, after it was just yeah and then oh, i guess that's an interesting memory is like and yeah because i think i think we were in uh columbus and then we uh we went out to dinner and then we decided to go to some bar for drinks and then this and then a bunch of uh, a bunch of other bands were on tour and also had off days near the same city so like uh we ended up going to this bar and i, I felt i felt kind of bad for the guy because you could tell he was it was just him and i think he was probably used to only having like a handful of people in a night and yeah we we showed up with all of make them supper so, you know maybe like maybe like 11 or 12 people and then um and then i guess K kane hill was on tour with oh okay, and you. Oh, so okay. A couple of guys from those bands came in and then a couple of guys from this band avoid came in and mm -hmm. then it just ended up turning into like we had probably like 30 people in the bar and wow it was just a bartender and I, I think i saw him shed a tear at one point oh um, dude he was so frustrated <laughs> for me. i think he had more like personal stuff going on in his life but for sure that was it was a blast just having all those i don't know having a big group hang and it's not like a it's not a show like it's you right don't all have, like you don't have to like leave and go do something like you can just kind of hang and enjoy each other's company like that was that, that was a fun memory actually awesome dude that's great to hear man super cool thank you for sharing that dude that's awesome and uh also congratulations on the new album dude uh it was uh my album of the year of 2022 i absolutely 
adored every single song and i thought it's like an absolute masterpiece of an album and i mean i think it's yeah dude and i think it's been doing really well for you guys i know you and i talked a little bit over instagram there was a few people that maybe weren't so sold on it but i think overall the general like scene was like this is a fantastic album i mean bumped you guys up to like what over a million followers on spotify i mean that's that's huge man and so like congratulations i know this album like means a lot to you like especially with everything going on um i mean what what are like some i guess some some takeaways from this album i mean is it hard to write about these kind of personal struggles like do you kind of do it for yourself or do you know like maybe it's going to help somebody that listens to like your music if, if that question makes sense yeah um no i i wouldn't say it's it's like i wouldn't say it's challenging to write about because i think i just i learned really early on in my life that that's that's my only way to have some type of cathartic process is of course just to like it's just to learn how to translate something negatively into into something i wouldn't say positive but just something right. that's constructive or you know something that can help somebody else so um yeah for me you know with my dad i just i had a lot of things to get out in that regard and even outside of my dad you know there was my there was my daughter you know i i had you know like heartbreak with like a girl in particular just right. you know like most people do and so you mm -hmm. know these are things that um i think I think if I bottle up, I, I just don't, I don't feel very good emotionally or internally. So yeah. it's just something that I wouldn't say it's like challenging. It's just, for me, it's, it's just kind of a, uh, it's my own healing process and it is, it's kind of my job that like, you know, these days too, to do that. And um, I think, I think for me it was cause I, you know, I didn't have a great upbringing in my like teenage years with my, my mom had a drug addiction and it was just yeah. a very, it was just kind of a strange environment to to grow up in when I was younger. And I feel like um, I feel like that was all I had sometimes when I was just going through it when I was a teenager was I, yeah. I had like a I had like a you know, I had like a boom box on top of my yeah dresser and it was it, you know, you would just pop a CD in and you know, I had I had like stained <laughs> like Oh yeah, dude. I had like Lincoln Park and of course uh, uh, brand new, just um just all this like kind of yeah like e like emo or like melancholy music but yeah um, the, like the sadness in the music just uh i don't know it just it ma it made me feel really good it just made me feel like it just made me feel like i wasn't alone in, in what i was experiencing because i think when you're younger and you're going through this stuff it, it does feel like it feels like your pain is is exclusive to only you right and, um i think it's hard just to kind of keep in perspective but like everybody everybody suffers to a degree you know right but, uh, i just think it was a cool like kind of a cool like full circle moment at some point that i realized that like we we hopefully get to offer that uh to other people who listen to our music the way that, that music helped me when i was younger so yeah it is, uh, it's a nice thing i think it's it's a nice release for me and it's it feels good too because i i do hope that like it it helps other people if they do listen to our band yeah definitely dude i i love i mean it's cool how like you and i kind of see music the same way i i didn't have so much of a a, a hard upbringing and I, I i have looked into your story i've watched like your heart support videos and you've talked about before like with your with your mom and i'm like this guy seems like he's got a you know a good head on his shoulders when it comes to like writing this music that you know can really help himself and help other people i remember uh I remember my friend introduced me to Linkin Park, their album Meteora, and I just I spun that record for forever, dude. And like I had the I had the actual CD, and yeah, I had like a like a portable CD player and like those big headphones, and I would just jam somewhere I belong over and over, just like relating to those lyrics, dude, and like just sometimes crying like to the music. And so I don't know, man. I just think that's really cool. Like you're able to just like put yourself out there and to, to help other people. And I do want to, I don't know if you've ever been asked this question before, but I did see, um, I really like your Instagram stories. A lot of them are really like, uh, inspirational. And there was one that really stuck out to me where you were talking about how music like was essentially kind of like a therapy or a way to help you here. Um, and I know a mental health of course is a big part, you know, like it can, it can, it can weigh us down you know, no matter what we're going through. And so I guess a question I would have for you, and I thought about this for a while is so for those who aren't necessarily like maybe in a band or making music or writing lyrics, um, what are some ways you think personally that you could help someone who struggles with like, 
uh, mental health. Now I know everyone's situation is a little bit different, but like, are there some other ways that you kind of like cope with mental health or something that you could like tell people that has helped you, um, in the, and that's helped you before, I guess. Yeah. Um, I think like exercise is like a really underutilized way. And I think people say like, Oh, like you're just like lifting weights and doing, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I really did. Um, it's hard these days, honestly, to find time to, yeah. to exercise with, with uh, my daughter. But like, I, I still, I still try and go a couple of times a week, but it, you know, I feel like in the peak of like when I had like a personal trainer and I was like rock climbing a couple of times a week and it was just, mm-hmm. um, I mean, it really does just like release these endorphins that like, I, you know, I was just going kind of like not really excited or just kind of bummed out. And then I would just walk out feeling really good about a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And I mean, of course, like if you, if you really commit to it and then you start actually seeing a difference, like in your physical appearance, I think it just helps you feel better about yourself. And then, uh, so I mean, exercise is a great way. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things. Some people get their pain out through through like art, you know, like um, my, my daughter's mom, it's like an incredible artist. So mm-hmm. she, and I can tell like, she might not, you know, write down like her, like words, you know, or lyrics like I do, but I feel like she kind of translates what she's feeling into art sometimes. And it's, it's really cool to see. And I think even if, yeah, even if you're not like a, even if you're not like a musician, you know, cause that's, that is kind of a, it's a more like technically, tough thing to be i don't know to like complete a song and put together like melodies just out of mm-hmm. your head it's, i'm sure it's kind of a weird process for somebody who's never done it before but yeah um i mean you can even just like uh, i mean because i used to just write poetry it, you know it, it wasn't always like music so i think you can write poetry about what you're feeling i honestly think it's even just like like i think it's so interesting if you have internalized thoughts just to get them out of your head um it kind of makes them more real and there's you know yeah. there's times where I feel like i feel things for like months and then i just say it out loud and then it kind of just makes it more of a real a real feeling and i feel like it, it changes the way i think about it so i think just like some people do that thing where like you can write your thoughts down on a piece of paper and then you can like you can take a match and burn that piece of paper and it's like a way to let those feelings go. And I mean, yeah. I think therapy is also just a huge, like a huge one. I think, you know, people yeah, underutilized cause they're, they're worried. There's like a stigma about it. Like there's something wrong with you if you seek therapy, but um, I, I've been to therapy and I, I think it's a, like, I think there's a lot of good things about it. And I think a lot of people can like, e- even if you think you're doing well, like I think there's a lot of things people can benefit from going to therapy, but yeah yeah there's, there's definitely a lot of stuff out there um yeah. just kind of depends on what you're what you're looking for for sure man i think it's cool hearing it from you because obviously you know like you're a, a recognizable name and so i think that's really cool when people can hear from somebody that i guess i don't know if you like the word being looked up to but people do look at look up to your band and so i think that's cool that you can say you know those things and realize like you know what like we're not alone in this life. And I think that's, that's really cool. And yeah, like what you're saying about therapy too. I, you know, I've been to therapy a multitude of times and it actually inspired me to want to study, to be like a therapist and help other people, you know? And I think, uh, it's something that I've, my, my fiance was able to help me like realize, like, you know, maybe you can like help people with this. And I don't know, like, I, I think therapy is a wonderful thing. And I think that's, you know, such a powerful thing. Even, even if I think, you know, it's kind of, your body's kind of like a car a little bit. Like you always got to take it in to get checked up. Like your body needs that too, you know? And so I think it's good. Like, even if you're not really struggling, like just going to talk to somebody, just like, you know, I'm kind of stressed out. It's just amazing. Like what, you know, what you can do with that. So I appreciate you bringing up those points, man. That's, that's super sick. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah dude. Awesome. Yeah, dude. So let's talk about here. Um, you got some cool stuff coming up here as well. I saw that you are guys are opening for Silverstein, dude. I mean, that's gotta be, that's gotta be huge, man. I mean, I, I, how did that, I mean, I don't know if you're allowed to talk about like the logistics of how that happened, but how does that, I guess, how does that work? Like, do you get a call from somebody and they're like, Hey, do you guys want to open for Silverstein? Like, I have no idea how that all works. Um, yeah, basically like, uh like it's 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 silverstein's like headlining tour so they they set up everything as far as like mm-hmm. the dates and the routing goes um and then they usually have a they have a budget put together that they can offer um you know bands to support um and they basically once they 
once they get like uh, routing together and everything is pretty much locked in, they start sending out, um, well, ba bands can submit if, if they catch wind of the tour, they can kind of throw their name in, into the hat. But a lot of times like an mm -hmm. offer is an offer is sometimes sent out. Cause like they have a band in mind that they, that they want to actually open the tour. So, okay. um, yeah, it was kind of a well. I did lead singer syndrome with Shane uh, a couple of years ago for his podcast, and yeah. uh, he was just uh, he's just a really sweet guy. When when we did the podcast, and he even I've seen him a handful of times since then, and he's just always been a, a really a really sweet guy. And um, I think I think they maybe just recognized like they, they saw you know any any minor amount of success that we were having and i think we were like an ideal band to have supporting them because our with our album having just come out and you know yeah. they, they basically most times when you do a headliner you want to just try and look at like who has a lot of value to maybe like bring people to your show um yeah. you know for for ticket sales but also maybe people like who haven't heard of your band before or yeah. you know expand your audience a bit so i think we've been on I think we've been on Silverstein's radar for a little bit to support them be just nice. because of the podcast. And then, uh, yeah, they just, uh, I think sometimes you'll usually catch wind that like they're setting it up and that you're like, you're probably going to get an offer. And then, yeah, yeah, usually you get, you usually get like an email forwarded from your agent. Like here's, here's yeah. the offer. Like here's, here are the terms. And then you can usually, um, you can either accept or you can um, like ask for, changes to something like set time or mm -hmm. you know things like that and then once you guys agree on it you just you confirm they lock in and then you know then they send you all the like the tour flyers and everything and it's yeah it's it's very cool i was uh i i mean i'm still a big silverstein fan i was just i was probably more prominently a silverstein fan when i was younger just for sure I like I, I just listen to a lot more like pop and r&b now but yeah it's um no it's it's really cool i mean like you know the the high school version of me yeah yeah <laughs> <clears throat> would be a lot more ecstatic i think i For think sure. like as, i just think like as we you know tour and maybe play with people who are you know like like in bigger bands or more established it's like i just think like the more you do it the more you realize like they're just they're just people who play music like you who got you know lucky or they or they're very talented and it put them mm -hmm. where they're at and so i think it's like i'm just i'm not sure like i view a lot of like bigger bands as like larger than life like as i used to when i was right. young because I, I i don't think a lot of like bands want that treatment or that dynamic you know when you're on tour with them that they feel yeah. like you're like, fangirling you know yeah yeah um, so <laughs> it's just uh i think it's like easier just to kind of maintain like that they're they're just human beings who all, who just have the same job that you do basically exactly but, uh, yeah it's, it's exciting man i I, lo I love those guys and i I've, I've just heard the best things about like them as people in their camp in general so I, I think it's going to be a really fun tour i think so man that's going to be really cool again really happy for the success that you've been seeing man i think that's so cool and again dude i'm excited for the future when we get like a like a dark sun like headlining tour man i'm uh i'm really hopefully hopefully that's in the i mean i, I know you're sure you can't talk about it, but i'm sure it's got to be in the book somewhere down the road i'm sure that's going to do like so well for you guys here like that's that's got to be exciting dude because again i think like all the songs like you're mentioning that you listen to a lot of pop r&b that really comes out on the new album and i'm also a big fan of like pop and r&b so like that's why for me like the lyrics were really good and they hit home and it's just a good sounding like record and so i think that's i don't know like i can hear your influences you know in the music man i think that's really cool if you were to if you were to put together uh, like a dark sun tour like there was no like limitation to what bands let's say you guys were headlining who would you want who are three bands you want to play with you guys um it, if they would open for us we would we would love to take the devil wears prada because they're um oh they're, yeah we just we toured with them uh with we came and i feel like we just we we all just became like uh i mean you usually become friends with most people you tour with but um yeah they're, I don't know. There's just something different about them. They were just, they were really like, especially for like how long they've been at it. You know, some, some bands yeah. like keep to themselves and stuff. They were, uh, they were just like the sweetest people. And I, I, I talked to, I talked to some of them usually like once or a couple times a week, like a yeah. lot more frequently than you do with like bands you typically go out on the road with. So, right. Their uh, new album is great too. I mean, they did a phenomenal yeah. job with color decay, dude. Super good. 
yeah um they're they're a great band we we definitely want to tour together and so we, we talk about it all the time so i'm yeah. sure it'll line up we just we think about like you know depending on how popular we are by the, the time that we headline because we're probably not going to headline until I, i'd say like early next year just because okay the, the rest of our year is already booked and i think but because we're doing like that bigger tour later this year but has more like two to six thousand caps i think um I think it'll just be good because we'll be coming off of that. Um, oh, yeah. Being exposed to a lot of newer people. And then we're, you know, because you need to sleep talk to her. I think the rooms were like, you know, on a lower scale, like 300 cap and then anywhere to like 800 or 900. But I think the goal is on our next headliner to aim for more like 1,000 to 2,000 cap rooms. Yeah, um, so, that's awesome. Um, so I think, yeah, I think Devil Wears would be great. Um, I think... Uh, there's a band called Avoid um, that's awesome, and they're, yeah. they're they're really talented, and they're um, they're just a good hang, man. They're just they're the they're just the funnest people. Like they're they're like a, their singer is like a golden retriever in a human being. Like he's <laughs> just the, he's just the funnest, yeah, off the wall energy guy. Um, but they're a really good hang, and I think they'd be a really good support band. And I feel like they'll, I feel like they'll. Uh, they'll be a lot more popular i think by the time that we headline again and mm -hmm. um i don't think this band would do it because i think they're they're kind of blowing up in their own right but uh i'd love to tour with sleep token because thank uh, you thank you for saying that really, <laughs> yeah they're just a great they're they're great they're a great group of guys and they're um they're they're really they're really talented i've, I've seen them a couple of times out here in uh in la and they're yeah yeah they just, they just kill it and i i i just like the uh i like the um you know what's the word i'm looking for you know the the anonymity in their band where you don't really know who anybody is and they yeah just get off stage yeah. it's so crazy like i would love i i miss them they came back in october here i live in the like near portland oregon like seattle washington area so they were they were close but uh i i went to go see um oh who do i see it was lamb of god spirit box fifth or an autopsy and there was one other band that i forgot but that was that was, that was a cool show but so i went to that one but uh yeah sleep token was near my area and i was like dang it dude but yeah they have been blowing up you guys are on the same record label as them aren't you yeah yeah we are Th that's pretty that's pretty sick dude that's really cool yeah that band is great like they're new they just put out a new song last night and it's super sick but yeah it's just cool like a lot of like everyone's just getting all this cool exposure man so i think that's that if that ever happened that would be like the coolest thing in the entire world dude i would drive to go see that show wherever it would be man that would be super sick <laughs> yeah yeah i'm, I'm awesome. sure one day we'll we'll link up but it's yeah kind of when, you know. yeah for sure awesome man well i just have um just a few more questions for you here and then we'll go in and get you going um they're actually questions from uh my patrons so i i let them know like you were coming on and uh, they just had just like a few questions i told them let's not do anything like you know too sensitive or anything like that but really simple questions here um so the first one that i have is what do you like to do when you're off tour? Like, what do you do like if you have just like a free day i know you have your daughter of course but is there anything that you'd like to do like just chilling yeah, so it's 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 really just my daughter most of the time. But yeah. um, if I uh, if I can, I like uh, I like to rock climb. Um, I did anyways, but I man, my um, yeah, my my back's been having a, a lot of a lot of issues like oh, uh, yeah. the, last, the last year or so. But um, I I went to a chiropractor though, and, and I'm definitely looking at getting that kind of fixed because I guess yeah. I guess I just have I have shitty posture. So yeah. <laughs> I think that's why i feel you yeah. yeah but um yeah um i loved rock climbing when i could go um it's just a really um some more like interesting way to exercise sometimes i'm just not in the mood to just go right stand and lift weights or you know like right, run like who, who who enjoys i mean there are people who enjoy running but i i don't get it i like going I walking but running yeah running's too hard dude <laughs> no. um yeah so i mean um yeah i, I love i love getting a chance to rock climb when i when i can um i just yeah. think i have to lay off it for a while because my my back is kind of yeah kinda fucked up. but um yeah that that was a fun thing for me to do otherwise i mean it's just nice to like i feel like me and a lot of my friends have just uh, unintentionally you know all around the same time started having kids so like yeah uh, you know my my bassist and my band ramon he he has a he has a daughter she's about to be four so oh, a lot wow. of it's nice sometimes to like hang out with like other parents and like bring your kids around each other and it's uh you know we'll usually sometimes we'll go to like a we'll go to like a brewery where we can 
have a beer and some food, but our, our kids can kind of like run around and play. So it's, yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it is, a, it is really just so much, um, just trying to like spend time with my daughter when I'm home, just cause when I am away, it's, you know, it's, it's a bummer. Like it's, it's yeah. not easy. Yeah, for sure, man. Absolutely here. And then uh, last question for you here from a patron that I had. Um, I don't know if you're allowed to say it, but are there any new Hurt Wave songs in the works? No, not not really at the moment. Okay. There's, um, yeah, it's it's kind of challenging because sometimes I because um, I I write a lot of his stuff for for Dayseeker and for Hurt Wave and yeah. you know a lot of like the a lot of the starting points anyway is like the you know like the brain childs like I, I start a lot of them and it's sometimes it's hard to analyze um like oh is this something to be for day seeker or for her yeah yeah I've been writing i've been writing a lot of um i have like a like i have probably like three or four songs that are like they're like half songs but they're um so a lot of ideas like on softer stuff on like the piano or on acoustic that i've been like working on but like they feel uh I don't know. They feel like too soft to be even hurt wave songs. So like I've I've been thinking about um just doing like I haven't put out like solo music in a really long time. So I thought about yeah. just doing like more mellow acoustic stuff. So I've definitely been writing some stuff for that. But cool. I think um yeah, hurt wave is tough because that's like a Mike and I project. But like, right, it's also a challenge because I feel like when Mike and I were kind of finishing off and recording everything for the hurt wave ep um it was like in the middle of the pandemic so uh day seeker was just kind of like dead in the water at the time and I, yeah. I didn't i didn't have hazel back then so it was a lot of free time to write and work on it and now i feel like like i have my daughter um day seeker is, is just um even on the off season because we're you know we're trying to find our like a new drummer to go out with us for yeah Thursday. and then um and then everything we have planned um and then mike's mike's getting uh mike's getting married um i think wow yeah like i i I just feel like our lives are a lot busy we we definitely i think started that project with the intention of you know doing like a night therapy too and you know Mm -hmm. so on and so forth but like i think i think the stars have to kind of align for yeah for that to kind of come together in the way that it should because um yeah, because we we're both just very very busy people these days. But it's it's definitely something we we want to we want to put out you know another full release at some point. But cool, I can't say when. I definitely feel like Dayseeker and a couple other things are just more of a priority at the moment. Yeah, absolutely, man. I totally understand that. But yeah, Hurt Wave is also great too. I'm a huge fan. It sounds all of it sounds fantastic. So, dude, Thanks. I uh, yeah, man. I uh, I just want to give you this time really quickly. I know you got to get going. Um, I would love for you to like you know if you're able to like. If you want to plug your stuff, I know I have a Patreon, and I'd be more than happy to leave that on my YouTube channel as well. So if you want to take this time really quick to just kind of plug Dayseeker and your your Patreon, whatever you like to do. Yeah, I mean, not much, honestly. We just have, um, yeah, we have the Silverstein tour that's coming up, so you can get tickets to that at uh, dayseeker.band. Um, we have a lot, a lot of other touring coming up um, that we haven't announced yet, but it will be announced soon uh yeah i have my patreon um i think it's just patreon.com slash rory spencer mm-hmm. and yeah you can find me on most social media links just at rory spencer but otherwise Perfect. that's pretty much it man yeah awesome awesome dude well i want to thank everyone listening to this episode of the chandler burton podcast and rory i want to thank you so much again for taking some time out of your day to just have a little bit of a conversation with me here i learned a lot about the music i'm so happy for your success with dark sun and you are just like the nicest dude man so again thank you so much for like also thank you for like watching my reactions and like replying back to me like that that was huge for me and super nice so uh, i'm grateful to call you a friend dude so thank you so much dude i appreciate it yeah thanks for having me man of course man until next time i hope y'all take care much love to every single one of you guys